Good morning, everyone. Um, it's so great to have you guys here in this group. Um, thanks for coming to uh, learn a little bit about Trello. Um, if you have ever uh, explored Trello and your brain works the way my brain works, hopefully this is going to kind of be like this great, amazing, earth shattering information that's going to change your life going forward because it sure did change mine. Um, so welcome to everyone who's here. Um, I am streaming live from something called StreamYard. And so it, it's a it's a Facebook integration, but it doesn't always collate the the comments as as you're uh, as you're sending them in. So uh, sometimes I'll see your comments. Sometimes I won't. So I see Debbie and Krista and Barb and Teresa. I see you guys right now. So I'm glad that you guys are here. Um, Please be sure as questions come in to go ahead and jot those questions down. If I don't see them and I don't address them when we're doing the live, I will, of course, go back when this is over and add anything back that you guys want me to add back. So um, it is Tuesday morning. So it's week six, season six of Groundhog Day. And I hope that you guys are... Um, maybe learning some new things, making some new changes. You're here. So the fact that you're here um, makes me realize that you guys are hoping to improve some of your systems. So today's training is called Organize to Strategize. It is a Trello training specifically for directors. Um, now, before we get started, I want to tell you this. A system only works if you use the system. There are going to be a couple of different ways that you can use Trello. You can use Trello for your personal boards, for just things for projects that you want to work on. Let's say you're planning a vacation or you're planning a wedding or a shower or an event. You know, you can use it for personal, but you can also use it for project boards and you can work with your teams to collaborate in that. So what I really want to talk to you guys today about is those project boards, because that's what's going to make a difference in your business. So in taking a look at this slide, um, just some things that you just some things that you guys are going to want to establish is this your routine. You have to set up a daily routine to tackle your tasks. So coming up with a routine that works for you. Maybe it's the night before, maybe it's a Sunday night doing the week before, maybe it's early morning, the morning of, but whatever it is, you have to have a routine that's going to work for you. And then, of course, you also have to plan. You have to plan what you are what you need to organize. You have to plan what you're going to organize. And then once you get all the things organized, you've got to review it and make sure that it's a system that's going to work for you. And like I said, the only system that's a good system is the system that you actually will do. So those are some things that you need to establish for you. Great time for a reset. Great time for reprogramming your brain, your mind, your priorities. So hopefully this will be helpful. So the, the first thing that I want to do when you're when I'm talking to you about Trello is you've got to decide what do you want to organize? And the best way to do that is to come up with a brain dump. Now, I'm going to give you guys a confession I am a very visual learner. It drives my husband crazy, but like I'm going to give you like just a little sneak peek into my office. You see that my cork board right there? It is always full of post-it notes because I am always coming up with the project and I have to dump everything out of my brain and organize all of the steps so that I know how I want to do this. Like when I came up with this training, I was like, okay, what are the things that you guys want to know? What are some things that have been most helpful for me? And so I come up with a brain dump. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a glimpse into a sample of a brain dump. This is for our onboarding process that uh, we created. I just kind of came up with a new onboarding process to go into 2020 because remember 2020, it was going to be everyone's year and midway through we're using coffee filters for toilet paper. So we had a great start to the year and I am so thankful that my sweet neighbor Beth allowed me to go to her lake house with a good friend and we just sorted out all the things. So this is what the brain dump looked like for the onboarding process. So again, what you'll need 
is a variety of post-it notes and then a flip chart post-it. So this is a great flip chart to use because you can actually stick these on the wall. So you'll want to just dump out, brain dump all of your systems. And then in color coordination, you're going to write out the steps of whatever your process looks like. So again, if you, you if th these are really hard to see, you can't really see them here, but this just says, you know, the days across like day one through eight, the green post-its were the items that I needed the new employee to do. The yellow post-its were an item that I need my director to do. And then the red post-its were things that I had to take care of and pay attention to myself. So again, that's just what an example of a brain dump looks like. Make sure you have your variety of colored post-its because these will change your life. Um, a cool thing about Trello too is there is a post-it app that if you actually do your post-it notes, Trello can actually make it into a board. So I haven't explored that yet because I'm a little bit anal about my boards. But if you want to explore something new and you've got the post-it note on your or app on your phone or your iPad, try that and see if it works for you. But that's what a brain dump looks like. Um, so the team boards. So this is the process. That's the process that I used to create all of my team boards. And when I say team, these are boards that I collaborate with other people on, whether it's some other of my stretch and grow owner friends, we, we do a lot of projects together, or whether it's something that's on my own personal team. So what we have here are three teams that I use the most. These are the three ones I use the most. So for my leadership collaboration, this is my leadership team. I've got two uh, full-time directors that we work with and we have 10 boards that we work in. So we've got a bringing in business, like when someone sends us a proposal and they want a proposal. So that's where I keep that information. Coach rounding. Um, um, let me talk to you about rounding. So think of rounding like what doctors do, like doctors make their rounds. They go from room to room to room and they check on their patients. Well, as a director or a leader of any organization, you can go room to room to room and check on your, your people. And so we have a very specific tracking system that at least once every one or two weeks, we see face to face. Our whole team is remote. So we need to see them face to face. And there are specific questions that, that I want to know, like, you know, how are they doing? Are my dance teachers ready for recitals? How is everything going? Just to check in, how can we pray for you? So all of that information is logged every other week by my leaders. If there's any concerns, any questions, all of that is in my Trello board and they can at me. So in your notifications, you'll get, you know, if they say, hey, Kelly had a question about this at Beth. And so then I see it. I get a notification on my phone. This is something I need to go address. The beauty of this is we're not constantly going back between texting and emails and all kinds of other things. Everything that has to do with the business goes into Trello. And this was a hard habit to break because it's super easy to quickly text someone or to shoot an email. Email will eat your entire lunch. So if you can work with your people and get them to at you back and forth in your cards in Trello, you keep a conversation going, it's a beautiful thing. So you're rounding your coach tracking. So tracking is a little bit different than rounding. That means we're keeping track of, did someone call in? Did we have a concern? Or did someone have, we have a little, uh, uh, you can add labels, a label for like a good karma move. Hey, this person has subbed seven times this semester. This is great or just something specific that's going on. So we can keep everything tracking in our coach tracking board. And then we've got our director projects and that is gonna be part of the productivity planner I'm gonna be sharing with you. I'm sharing two boards with you. One, is, and, and these were by your request, one is the personal productivity and then the other one is the onboarding. So you're gonna actually get two of these boards, but I pulled things for the personal planner from my director projects. The director projects is a great board because we're no longer, like I said, going back and forth with text and emails. And as a leader, I know when I ask one of my people to do something and I go in and I put it as, a, as an item in their Trello board, they have to physically check it off. So I no longer wonder like, gosh, I asked Amy to make that phone call to that school about X, Y, Z. Did she do it or did she not do it? Guess what? Because I made a Trello card for it and put it in her task list. I can know specifically, did she do it and what the answer was to it? So this has been great. Again, everybody has to agree to follow the system. But if you've ever had someone that you've worked with on a project 
and they're not a great communicator and you've got these 10 things out there wondering like, did this get done? And I don't really want to bother this person by asking them. You can know it if they did it in Trello. And if you look at Trello and you see that they didn't check it off or drag it to the done column, then it's a very easy way to just call and say, hey, notice that this is still kind of hanging out there. Can you let me know what the status is on this? So working with your leadership team on that is awesome. And then, of course, we've just got some things on enrollment, what our onboarding workflow needs to look like, recruiting, which is a whole nother concept um, that we really use this board for recruiting to track our recruits, our keep our future pipeline in to know kind of where they are in the process of hiring. Um, then we have an asset board, which is where we keep our passwords, access to all of our systems that we use, all of our branding information. And I've also taken a couple of those cards that I'm going to share with you today because those are really key to have as well. And then, of course, we have a board for social media. Now is a great time to audit your social media. Are you out there? Because parents are out there. People are looking to see what's going on in the social media world. They, I mean, this is your storefront now. If they can't come into your school, what you have going on on social media is what people are seeing. So what is your social media look like? Is it is it branded? Is the, is the content helpful? Are you serving your audience? So that might be something that you're going to want to take a look at. Um, next are our teaching curriculum boards. So we have um, several different programs that we use that we teach to our schools. So we've got sports, gymnastics, Camp Fit, which is just el like elementary PE, dance stars, fitness stars, music stars, and yoga stars. And then this gray one here, that's our guide board for coaches. So what we use the guide board for, I don't have a paper manual anymore. Everything we do is online. So the guide board is just a Trello board that's like the frequently asked questions. You have a question about payroll, you talk to Bryce. You have a question about your schedule, you talk to your uh, coordinator or you talk to me. If you have a question about um, when you need to order new shorts, shirts, or if you have curriculum questions, or if you need equipment, all of those things, what is the process for getting reimbursed for your gas? What is the process for requesting time off or getting a sub? All of the things are in that guide board for coaches. So if they ask me, hey, Beth, how do I request time off? I go onto that Trello board and I at them, here it is. And then I'm not typing. You need to go into your scheduling app and you need to request and you need to find your sub and you need to communicate. I don't need to say those things again because it's already there. Then as far as the curriculum board goes, every week, everybody knows what they're teaching. So if you're in a preschool, this would be great to have for all of your teachers. So it's September week one, what are we teaching? What are our curriculum assets? Is there a project? Do we need supplies? So if you can organize everything that your teachers need, maybe you've got a separate board by age group, or maybe you just want to have one big board. You don't really have a limit to how much you can put on those boards. You do have a limit to boards. For Trello to be free, you can't have more than 10 boards. Now, I have a paid account because I have all of the boards. I have boards for everything. But um, if you can just keep it to 10 boards, you're golden. It's totally free. So each program that we teach has a curriculum board and inside that board like i said it's it's the lesson plans by week it's the curriculum asset it's the social media asset we've got uh, let's say for dance there's a library of everything so if they're going over their choreography and they see that we've got oh tondu is in the lesson this week and they forget what is a tondu that boom there's a 10 second video or um, they just got some new hula hoops and they want to know what to do with hula hoops so they can go to those files and then bam, there's like 10, 30 second videos that show them what are the, all the things you can do with the hula hoop. So those are super duper helpful to our team and our team loves Trello. Um, and then of course, our onboarding track reports. This is one that I'm sharing with you guys. This has changed my life because when I am onboarding someone, all of the responsibility is on them. I'm not wondering, did I get your social security card? Did I get your background check? Have you done your fingerprints? Have you turned in all of these things? I have figured out a system to put all the responsibility on the employee. So all my responsibility is, is just going in and making sure that they followed that in Trello. So it, it's, a, it's a great thing. So these are the three main things that I use for, for my team. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Now I'm going to share with you your board. So what's going to happen after this training? I'm going to give you a link to go to to download these. So you'll actually if you've created your Trello account, which I hope you have, if you if you haven't done it, make sure that you 
you, you create your account. So when you click on these boards, they'll automatically populate in your account and you can use them. These are just public boards. There's not anything, there's no sensitive information or anything like that on them. They're just, I made them really very generic so that I could share them with you guys. So we are going to break into these two awesome boards and these are my favorites. So first let's take a look at our productivity planner. Internet, please work well. Okay, here we go. So think of it as a board. So I showed you guys a picture of my cork board. So think of the cork board and think of all of these things as maybe post-its on the cork board. So a few different ways to do it. I've got here on the first column, this is like your own to-do list. I'm gonna teach you two different ways to do your to-do lists. So when I'm doing my own personal to-do list, I create cards. So this is a board. Each of these things are lists and then underneath are cards. So for my own personal work, I create a card for each thing. So like I, this week I had to, uh, I spoke on a podcast, so I had to get ready for that interview. So now that I'm done with that, I can simply take this card and drag it over to done. And then as I do each of these things, like I, um, I scheduled Zoom for my Bible study tomorrow night, like that's already done. Um, I sent flowers to one of my instructors whose dad passed away. I completed our Trello training. So it is such a high, like y'all, I'm telling you, if you like to check things off of your list, you get an endorphin high when you drag something all the way over from your to-do list to the done list. It's a beautiful thing. So that is how I do my own personal to-do list. I create cards for everything. I can go in and add all the information. And then when I'm finished, I drag it to the done column. So I've got a to-do and a done column. Now I do things with my leadership team a little bit differently. So my director to-do is, is right here. What I do for her is if you'll look all the way over here to the side, if you can see this, there's a template. This is a template card. I created a template and all I have to do is just click copy and my directors copy that template every week and then they go in and they set up their weekly tasks. So when you click on it, there are three divisions that I need my girls to focus on and they create their to-do lists on Friday. So we have our coach connections, our school connection, and then our director duties. Now, I am gonna show you what this looks like um, I, I've got a past one that I'm going to pull up and I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I went in and, and I, I made sure that you, we didn't cross them off so you guys can kind of see how it works. But again, for my director, every Friday we have a review process. What do we need to do for next week? And in those three categories, so whatever your categories are, like I said, mine are, we need to connect with our team. We need to connect with our schools and then any duties that she needs to do, like administrative duties. So those are our three things. That's how we break it down every single week. Then I assign a due date to it. So if we look at this is a sample that we did back in February, which seems like 100,000 years ago. But so she created this for herself. Now, I've had my Amy for 12 years. I don't really have to tell Amy what to do because Amy knows what she needs to do. Anything I do, I make it bold. So that way she just realizes, okay, this is something that Beth asked me to do. But I've only asked her to do two things. She created all of her lists. And then when she's done with them, all she does is go in and make checks off of each one of them. She can also go in and add comments to them. I know if they're due. I know if they're overdue. We can at each other in this process. So creating a template that you want your people to do, the people that you're leading, creating a template. If you've got consistent tasks every single week, I have found that that is the easiest thing because it all stays in one card. I'm not going back and forth and figuring out what's in every card. Everything for that week is in that card. And so for my two full-time girls, I know what they're doing. I know what's been done. If I have questions, we can go back and forth. So use that. That's my best tip is to use that for people that you need to collaborate and communicate with. Also in this board, and I'm gonna make it big for you guys so you can see here, I've also put 
what are some recurring tasks that you might need to do? So there are some things in here that we keep for recurring, like we do weekly emails to all of our customers. We have weekly social media posts as well. Now, I put in here um, our card for social media. This is an example of one of our cards for social media. Here is the image. It was an image of Mr. Rogers that we're going to put up there. And then you can see here all of the communications that we had going back and forth. So um, my friend Cambry, she creates the uh, social media for Stretch and Grow. She is amazing. And so she added some special COVID-19 content for us to share. So she can say at board. And if you at board, that's everybody on the board gets it. Or you can just at each individual person. So she added the board. Everyone on the board gets to see this. And then I go in and I at my Amy, who's going to post it. And she says, yes, I already had these and I've used much of the info. I was just making sure we didn't have anything new for April. So again, that is allowing me to communicate with my person and say, hey, make sure you've posted these. And she's telling me, hey, I already saw it. I got it. I posted it. We're golden. And I don't have to worry about it. So I can take it off my plate and move on. And guys, I can tell you, my brain feels so much lighter because I don't have all these things I'm holding on to and wondering, did they get done or did they not get done? Um, another thing for you guys as a school is when you're doing your event planning, because we all work in preschool, we plan different events. So we've got this event column. So what do we do for back to school, fall festival, Thanksgiving, holiday parties, Valentine's parties, our spring fling? Are we going to schedule field days for any of our schools? What does the enrichment schedule look like? You know, if you're bringing on enrichments, what does that look like? What do end of the year programs look like? And then what field trips do we want to plan? So those are your school event planning. And then leadership assets. So I mentioned branding, for example, like for our Stretch and Grow brand, we have a specific brand that we will use in all of our correspondence and all of our core, everything that we do, we only use these colors. We only use specific fonts. So when my coaches are creating anything, I want them to stay on brand. So obviously it's important for me that I have our brand identity there. Then any scheduling system, system access, brand photography, pictures that I would want to share um, all of that is under leadership assets. Of course, here's just a card for template cards. You can make template cards for anything. And then over here is just future projects. Taking time to dream. Now is a time that in my own, on my own boards, that dream big column is gigantic because now that I'm not so bogged down in the day to day of everything, because our business 100% shut down right now. So I have a lot of time to dream and to think about the things that I want to do, whether it's for my stretch and grow business or whether it's for this speaking and training business. Um, I absolutely love to create. And so when I can free my mind of things, I mean, I'm post-it party like crazy in my office. I've got post-its on my windows, on my closet doors, on my bathroom mirror. I mean, they're all over the place because I miss people. I miss doing things. I miss Tr training and teaching and motivating and developing people. And so I am so thankful for a platform like Facebook that you guys can just be on the other side. And instead of sitting here in my office thinking of things for me to do, I can think of things to share with you guys. So I hope whatever board you have, you have a dream big column and you have a lot of things inside of that. So that is my productivity planner. And then... I'm going to go next to employee onboarding, telling y'all game changer. When you can take things off of your plate and have another adult be responsible for that, because when we're, if you're leading people, sometimes that beginning, that onboarding process is a babysitting. This is what I want to do when I onboard someone. I want to connect to their heart. I want to know what motivates them. I want to know what encourages them. I want to know about them. I want to kind of see if I can pick up any clues on some things and maybe some ways to manage around their weaknesses. I don't want to have to mess with saying, did you get your paperwork in? Did you get your paperwork in? I don't want to check my email 10,000 times to find out if they've turned in their paperwork. So this is what I'm sharing with you guys. So let's take a look at our onboarding system. So how to use this board? I just created a quick short video in Zoom 
of what it looks like. So you guys can watch that there to kind of get an idea of how I communicate with my people. And then they've got three basic categories. This is the brain dump that I shared with you guys early. So the first thing that I need them to do is complete their forms and tasks. So I created a card for everything that they need to do. Now, if you can see here, I'm not sure if you guys can see on your screen, but I am having them upload all of their paperwork to box rather than emailing it to me or giving me a piece of paper. I assign them a box folder. And so they will then go in and they will upload their I-9s, their W-4s, their driver's license, their social security card, their insurance, their high school diploma and transcript. They upload all that. I also have them take the Enneagram test because that's very helpful for me and knowing how what motivates them and how to manage them. Got an about me form. Then we talk about forwarding emails to me. Now, I am just going to say this. I have them forward all of the emails that they get from our state licensing department when we're going through their um, their onboarding process because things changed a little bit last year and I want to make sure that they're navigating that. Are they getting their fingerprints in time? Because I can't send them to work and most of you guys can't either unless you have their fingerprints done. So you need to make sure that you're on this. So I always say, anytime you get an email, I want you guys to forward it to me so I can help you navigate. So make sure you're doing that. Um, then they schedule their prints then they get fingerprinted. But again, every time they do this, they're going to drag it over to the done column and then see, bam, look at in that beautiful. It even gives them confetti when they drag it to the done column. It makes me so happy to do that. So that is the, that's their paperwork column. Then in the next column, this just goes through their phases of their in-class training. So we have five phases that we walk them through. So, you know, maybe you need to do a post-it party now. And what is your whole onboarding? Like we've got a lot of training to do and you bring on people with different abilities and different experiences, but there are specific things that I want them to do. Like when you first get started, you're just team, you're just team teaching. You're just being a kid and you're watching, you're watching what's happening in that classroom. Then you are going to take on teaching one segment or another segment. And then slowly over those five phases, maybe it's five days, maybe it's 10 days. It just kind of depends. Slowly, they'll start to take on autonomy of teaching that class. And the beauty of it is within each card, and I've deleted what I had in my cards because I want you guys to be creative and think of what it needs to look like in your card. What do you want them to take away from every time, every training day? Like if you had them in a two's classroom, what did that teacher do well? What could that teacher have done better? What did you learn from that teacher? What do you think you can, how can you add value to this two-year-old class if you're teaching this two-year-old class? So talking about how you can add value and what you're bringing to the table. We're, we're having them think about things that we weren't having them think about before. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about what your onboarding steps are. And then, so we've got their, their online training and then we, I'm sorry, in class, then we have their online training. So I do all of my courses in Learn Dash, which is what I do my digital courses for my speaking my and digital course training. But they have several courses that they need to work through. So we've got four core competency courses, and these four courses will cover everything that they used um, for. For their pre-service. So it's a lot of company culture. You know, we want to dial down on culture and what does that mean and, and what does our brand mean? And if you don't have a specific brand, especially an employer brand, I cannot stress that enough. I've got a training um, at my Beth Can Speaks website and it's called Creating a Brand New Culture. And it's a workshop that your teachers can do. It's a two hour workshop and there is a certificate in there, but it walks you through breaking down the brand process. We just rebranded Stretch and Grow after it was a 27 year company. And we rebranded and we went through not just the consumer facing content, but all of the back office systems. And what does it look like? And so your employer branding is your talent attraction strategy for the kind of person that you want to hire. Who are you attracting to your school? Because if you've done this for a hot minute and you've hired five people, I guarantee you, you've hired one that might not be a rock star whose core values might not align with the culture that you're trying to create in your school. So intentionally training your people about your culture. So important. So important. And then, of course, the systems, you know, the rules, the expectations, the regulations, all of those things. So we've got our welcome to the experience, 
fulfilling the experience, delivering the experience, and the parent paid experience. Because some of our um, some of our programs, the parents pay for, and so there's a lot of details in processing all of that. Um, so those are the four main courses, and then we've got courses for each one of our programs. So these would be like your curriculum training programs. Like if you're doing, you know, Frog Press or, or um, Abeka, whatever your curriculum is, you're going to want to make sure that they get specific training on your curriculum because you're hiring someone to come into your school. You're hiring someone to, to be there and you want them to teach what you want them to teach. But anyway, the beauty is, again, once they're done, what do they do? Bam, they just drag it over to the done column. And then after, you know, the onboarding process may be seven to 10 days, you can track that by going into your Trello board and seeing what they've gotten done. And guess what? If you told them they need to do something in three days and it's not done, rather than calling them or texting or emailing you at them, say, hey, I noticed I don't have, I don't see that you've scheduled your fingerprints. What's the holdup? Because I need to get your fingerprints done before you get into the classroom. So super important game changer. So whatever industry you're in, I know I've got a, a, a girlfriend in here who owns a dance studio. Whatever your systems and processes are, your onboarding is going to look different based on your business and based on the, 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 the key and core values that you're going to have them do. But make sure that you're intentional about your onboarding process. So I'm going to be sharing those two boards with you. Also, um, you'll have an opportunity to go in and um, let me let me show you guys. It's, there's a, there it is right there. So if you go to BethCanSpeaks.com in your email address, it'll send you this PDF. And on the PDF, it'll have the links to the boards I just showed you. Then it's going to have links to all of these training videos. So if you're not familiar with Trello, they've got some great trainings on there. Those are my top five. And then there's also a, a managing remote teams or managing Rona. If you have teenagers or maybe you don't have teenagers, maybe you're just kind of cool like that. And you're calling this Rona. Corona is Rona. And so uh, just as a play off of that, um, we created a couple of COVID specific resources for you guys. So um, when you go to uh, BethCannon.com, I created a training from Survive to Thrive. I did that Facebook Live last week for directors. And I had several people say, oh, my gosh, I want my teachers to get this. So I created a course for them. And um, there's a promo code and it's Rona and you save 50 percent. So that one hour training for teachers is only five dollars with the, with that. So if your teachers need hours, there's a five dollar training. Um, like I said, some of the content that we did, they're going to get that um, journal, that reflection journal, and it really kind of helps them to walk through the season and be intentional about it. If you have friends that haven't signed up for the Facebook Live uh, or not for the for the Facebook group that we're in right now, please share that with them. And then also, um, if you are looking for other digital courses for your teachers. I'm a registered trainer in the state of Texas, and I also do training for Stretch and Grow International. So I've trained people from all over the world. Um, but if you need, if your teachers need specific hours, let me know what the specifications are in your state. I know there's lots of different people from different states, and if there's some paperwork or there's some information that I can help you get that so that you and your teachers can get credit for that, let me know, and I would be more than happy to answer those. So. That is our training for today. Um, I don't see that you guys have any any questions that I can see right now, um, but go online, BethCannonSpeaks.com slash free boards, and it'll send you an email. And on that email, you'll have your PDF with all of the clickable links. If for some reason it doesn't work, either private message me or um, you can email me, just Beth at BethCannonSpeaks.com. I hope that you guys learn so much. This will change your life. But I'm telling you, you have to be intentional. Don't just let this training go by and be like, ah, oh, that's kind of cool. And I'll do that someday. It is someday. It's someday. Someday has come. The time has come where you've got a lot of extra opportunities to do things differently. So decide who you're going to be when this is over. Decide you're going to be organized. Decide you are tired of asking people to do things and not ever knowing if they did them or wondering what the result is. Make your team accountable. You be accountable to your team. When I put my own to-do list there and my team sees, knows what I'm supposed to be doing, there's a lot of accountability there for me. Um, and again, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. So make sure you put them in the comments. 
And um, if you have any other ideas for things you want to do live, I it's so exciting to because I feel I've got a couple of pictures of some friends that are kind of sitting in front of me. I feel like I'm talking to you guys. So I'm such a dork about stuff like this, but it's been super fun for me. I hope it's been fun for you guys. Um, I will see you on the other side, hopefully in a live coming up soon. Take care. God bless. Bye bye.